over the last few days, there is a huge news about outbreak of Nipah virus in Kerala, South India. And from the media, newspaper and the news channels, it has been evident that there are more than 11 deaths in this Nipah virus infection. So what is Nipah virus? How deadly it is? Is there any vaccine? How does it affect the human? How to stay safe? Is there any treatment of that? All these questions should be answered in this video. So stay tuned and watch this video. So from the WHO guidelines, it has been shown these red mark zones are the top risk zones of Nipah virus outbreak and the striped lines are the potential other risk zones. Now, is it the first time Nipah outbreak in India? The answer is no. Nipah virus was first found in Malaysia and the outbreak happened in 1998 in Kampung Sungai Nipah. After that, in 1999, there was a severe outbreak of Nipah in Singapore. In 2001, there was a Nipah outbreak in Siliguri, West Bengal. And several people were dead in Nipah outbreak in 2004 in Bangladesh. Again, Nipah virus reoccurred in West Bengal in Nadia district in 2007. And after that, the evidence of Nipah outbreak is from Kerala, India. How deadly is Nipah virus? It has been seen from the statistical data that in outbreak at 2001, out of 66 cases, 45 were dead. So 68% was the fatality rate. From 2004 in Bangladesh and outbreak in 2005 in again another district in Bangladesh has shown that the fatality rate is almost 74 to 75%. That means Nipah virus is quite deadly and the mortality rate is pretty high. Now, what is the Nipah virus? Nipah virus is one of the RNA virus. That means Nipah virus use RNA as its genetic material and its family name is Paramyxoviridae. And in simple words, you know the other family members of this family. They are mumps and measles virus. And the deadliest family member of this family is this Nipah virus. And Nipah virus has negative sense single-stranded RNA as its genetic material. Apart from that, it has several surface glycoprotein which they use to invade into the host cells. That means into the human cells. Now, if we see the Nipah virus, there are several glycoproteins. Some glycoproteins marked in black here is known as fusion protein, which help the virus to infuse itself inside the human cells. And there are attachment protein which help the virus to attach to a host cell. Now, host cell membrane has receptors which can interact with these viral membrane glycoproteins. And this interaction lead to the entry of the viral genetic material inside the host. Once the genetic material is inside the host, it can replicate, make even more virus, an army of virus, and invade several other cells of the body. Now, how Nipah virus spread from bat to human? Let's say a bat is eating a fruit from the tree, and the bat is affected by the Nipah virus. So there could be a carrier of Nipah virus. Now, from the saliva and other body fluid of the bat, the Nipah virus could, could be transmitted to the human. For example, a human is eating a fruit which is lying on the ground and it is previously eaten and contaminated with the saliva, saliva of the bat could allow the transmission of the disease to human. The disease could be also transmitted by other cattle like pig. Let's say the pig is consuming a contaminated, uh, contaminated fruit or somehow it is coming in contact with uh, the salivary secretion or other bodily secretion of the bat. It is getting infected and it could work as a host and transmit that disease to human. Once a human is affected, it can spread the virus by aerosol or from other body liquids. It can spread the virus among the human community. And this is how the virus could spread rapidly and affect other humans. Now, what are the symptoms of Nipah virus infection? The first and foremost symptoms is severe respiratory infection, like 
severe coughing and sneezing, etc. Also, it comes along with high fever and severe headache. There is mental confusion, there is dizziness, there is also encephalitis like syndromes. For example, there is inflammation or a burning sensation in the head. Let's take a look at the most two complications associated with this Nipah virus infection. One of the complications is the airway infection. Nipah virus could get transmitted to another human by aerosol. So, and it's a droplet infection. So Nipah virus can go inside of the body of the human by its airways. And in the airways, the alve in the airways of the lungs, it can come in contact with the blood vessel. Once it comes in contact with the blood vessel, it can get inside the blood vessel. It can do a couple of deadly things. One of the thing is it can produce severe inflammation, that means alarming the immune system, and that's why there is a burning sensation in the airways. It can also cause necrosis of the blood capillaries, that means destroying the blood vessels. And all these things can ultimately lead to severe breathing problems. Apart from the breathing symptoms and the resp respiratory chronic infection, there are other symptoms as well. And Nipah virus is one of the deadly virus which can attack our CNS, our central nervous system, our brain. But how does Nipah virus manage to go to our brain? There are two ways that Nipah virus can go to our, go to our brain. One of the way, as it is going inside through our respiratory tract, it can follow the tract of the olfactory nerve and go to the brain. And it it's also can go to the brain by the bloodstream. It can cross the blood-brain barrier and blood-brain barrier is a safety wall for the brain. And it doesn't allow all the pathogens that is roaming around in the bloodstream to get entry in, into the brain. But it breaks the wall, it breaks the safety wall and can potentially damage it and thereby increase the risk of secondary infections as well. Also, Nipah virus can infect the nerve cells, that means the neurons and also the microglia. Now, microglia are immune cells in the brain. Once they are affected, they are more primed. They secrete alarming signals that would draw attention of other microglia and other immune cells in the brain. And all these things create a huge inflammatory response in the brain and that causes the burning sensation. Also, the vascular permeability of the capillaries surrounding the brain is increased in case of Nipah virus infection. That means, in simple word, the blood capillaries are loosening up. That means, loosening of the blood capillary can give rise to fluid exchange and that leads to swelling and other inflammatory responses. This is how Nipah virus can attack our respiratory system and the central nervous system. But how to understand that one person is affected by the Nipah virus or not? Is there any diagnostic test for that? Sorry, but currently there is no diagnostic test that can identify Nipah virus infection. Only from the patient blood sample by sophisticated medical test, National Institute of Vi Virology in Pune can still detect whether there is a infection in the bloodstream or not. But those tests are not available to public and those are pretty costly. So now what is in our hand is the symptoms. So symptoms are the only way to identify the infection. So don't ignore any symptom to be a casual disease like cough or cold. So if you have any symptom which is similar like that, that I have described, so quickly see your doctor or see the uh, nearby health center immediately. Now, is there any vaccine to Nipah virus? No, currently there is no vaccine to Nipah virus. So then what are the treatment options? Now, only treatment option right now is to keep the patient under intensive medical care. Under intensive medical care, itself the body of the patient can fight back to the virus and there is, there is a possibility, there is a rare chance that the patient, patient could revive the infection and get better. But scientists throughout the world is trying to develop antibodies against this protein which the virus use to get into the cells. But those vaccines or those 
therapies are not available to market. Those are in still clinical trial stage. So currently there is no vaccine. Intensive medical care is only option. So what are the precautions that we can take to make our family and make ourselves safe? First of all, don't eat any fruit that is contaminated by bat or that seems to be contaminated by any animal or consumed by any animal. Secondly, don't drink uh, common drinks like toddy or date palm sap. So all these things could be contaminated with bat saliva or urine. And since bat saliva or urine could contain the virus, so it increases the risk to spread the disease. Otherwise, once, the patient is, once in, anybody is infected by the virus, make sure that he or she is in isolation. And also, touching the patient should be with gloves or proper face mask. Otherwise, it, this disease can spread very rapidly. Normal hygiene and washing our clothes and utensils properly and sterilizing them could be another important things to do. Now, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to share and help to spread awareness among the people. Thank you.